Hello and welcome to Grade 6, Module 4, Lesson 7, Replacing Letters with Numbers. Student Outcomes. Students understand that a letter represents one number in an expression. When that number replaces the letter, the expression can be evaluated to one number. Lesson Notes. Just like 3 times 3 is 3 squared or 3 squared, units times units is unit squared or unit squared also called square units. So let's find the area of our first square here by simply counting up the number of units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the area of this square is area equals nine units squared which can also be written as 9 square units. So this method is good when you really don't have a lot of square units, as in this shape, it's a 3 by 3, so there's only 9 units total, so pretty easy. So if we change things up a little bit and we come up with a different type of square, and this one has 23 centimeters, and of course if it's a square it's 23 by 23, that's just way too many lines. I'm not going to spend all this time putting 23 lines this way and 23 lines this way just so I can figure out the area. Not only is it a lot of work, um, I stand a pretty good chance of making a mistake. So we're going to apply the formula for area. And you may recall the formula for area is area equals the length times the width. Well, in a square, the length and the width are equal to one another. So our expression that we could write is area equals 23 centimeters times 23 centimeters. So at this point, grab yourself a calculator, pause the video, and we'll see if we can figure out the area of this square. So here's my calculator. I'm going to punch in 23 times 23 equals, and I end up with my answer 529. So I can write area equals 529 centimeters squared and you could also write that as square centimeters. Exercise 1. Complete the table below for both squares. Note these drawings are not drawn to scale. So whenever you just see the letter S, this is telling you the length of the side or this, what the side is equal to. So go ahead, pause the video, take a few minutes and complete the first two rows of this table and then come back when you're ready. So how'd you do? Uh, pretty easy stuff here today. You can see that we just fill in the length of the side as four units, four units times four units, equals 16 units squared, excuse me, 16 square units, or 16 units squared. And the second shape, we had a length of 25 inches per side, 25 times 25, equaled our 625 inches squared. Let's look at example two here. Our job now is to figure out the value of the letter. So for the first rectangle at the top here, we see we have a side here that says B centimeters. And the question that goes along with it, what does B represent in the blue rectangle? So now we know that when you're dealing with rectangles, opposite sides are equal. So if this right hand side here is worth 8, or it has a length of 8 centimeters, that also means that the opposite side over here has the same length. So we can say that B equals 8 centimeters. That one's pretty easy. Second one's a little bit more challenging. The question here is, what does X represent in the blue rectangle divided into four equal parts? Well, we can see that one of these parts here is equal to 4 centimeters, and there's four equal parts, and each one is worth 4 centimeters. But the length of x is equal to two sections, so it's really 2x. So if x is 4, then 2x would be 8. So x equals 
eight centimeters. Okay, so this length here is eight centimeters. I may have misspoke a little bit. Each section is four, so put together, x equals eight centimeters there. So if we have the two large rectangles that have the same lengths and widths, can we find the area of each rectangle? So this first one, we know the formula, and I'm just going to redraw a smaller version of that rectangle off the side. Well, the width was easy, and our formula here is area equals length times width. So the width is 8, and now I'm trying to figure out what that missing measurement is. Well, again, if I refer back to my drawing, I'll see that one section is equal to 4. So it's 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, or we can say 4 times 4 is 16. So we have 16 centimeters and 8 centimeters. And if we grab our calculator, we can hit 8 times 16, and we end up with an area of 128 centimeters squared. So the area of the rectangle is equal to 128 centimeters squared. So we'll move on to exercise two here. We have two rectangles, one that's been split into square units for you, and one that simply has some labels. So you're going to pause the video, take a few minutes to fill in the rows of the table. Uh, this first shape goes with the first row of the table, and the second shape goes with the second row of the table. And by the way, feel free to use your calculator, especially on the second row of the table there, okay? Pause, do your work, and come back when you're ready. So here's our completed table. Uh, we have the length of the rectangle here being seven units and the width being four units. And here's our expression, seven units times four units equals 28 square units. And the second one, this is the one you probably use the calculator with. We have a length of 46, a width of 32, 46 meters times 32 meters equals 1,472 meters squared. So check your table for accuracy. If you made a mistake, I'll just try it again and see if you can get the correct answer. If not, come see me and I'll give you the help that you need. Moving on to our second formula of the day, which is volume. And again, you probably recall that volume equals length times width times height. So we have two different uh, shapes here. Our first one is just showing us the different dimensions here. Here's our length, here's our width, here's our height. And that's when you multiply them together, that's equal to volume. So if we take the second one, we can do volume equals length which is 6 centimeters, times our width, which is 2 centimeters, and then times our height, which is 8 centimeters. So we can join some of these together. 6 times 2 is 12, times 8 is 96 centimeters, and our label changes a little bit this time. We can say 96 centimeters cubed, and you could also write that out as 96 cubic centimeters. Of course, as you can see, most people prefer this first one because it's a little bit shorter and easier to write. Moving on to exercise three, we're going to apply those skills that we just learned and you're going to solve for these two shapes. Again, this first shape will go along with this row here. The second shape will go along with the second row. And you're going to be using the formula volume equals length times width times height. Should be pretty easy for you. Again, feel free to use your calculator. Pause the video, do your work, come back when you're ready. So here's our completed table. Pretty self-explanatory. The length here, 12 units, or excuse me, width 5, height 15, 
12 units times 5 units times 15 units equals 900 cubic units. And the second row, same idea here. The length is 23, the width is 4, the height is 7. So we have 23, 4, and 7. 23 centimeters times 4 centimeters times 7 centimeters equals your 644 cubic centimeters. You guys did a fantastic job on today's lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, go ahead and complete your exit ticket, and then you can move on to your problem set.